Welcome back to Character Camp. We're going to be uh, teaching you how to create original characters in Procreate. And today, we're going to be talking about how to create animal characters. I'm really excited about this because I happen to really love animals. So this is going to be a fun uh, video for you guys. Um, Character Camp is a part of the Making Art Everyday Challenge. This is a series of daily drawing prompts, tutorials, resources, uh, motivation, and a supportive community, all with the goal of helping you overcome your creative fears and establish a daily art making practice. Um, every month we do a theme, and this month's theme is character, so that's why we're getting into this whole Character Camp thing. Um, but if you want to learn how to draw better, drawing often is the best way to do it. And that's what this is all about. So if you want to learn more, go to bardobrush.com slash join MAE. It's all free. Uh, and I highly recommend getting involved. It's a really great way to improve your skills. Okay. So how do you make an animal a character? Obviously, there's difference between just drawing an animal and drawing an animal that is a character. So I've got some, some little tips for you um, to things that you can do to make a just a basic animal into more of a character. And then we're going to get into like drawing an actual character too. So, um, so the first tip that I have is to exaggerate defining characteristics. And what I mean by that is each animal has um, things about it that are like unique to that animal. So like, for example, um, I had some examples in my head. Um, well, I'll just show you the examples that I made. So let me show you this one. So this is a rabbit and this is a photo of a rabbit I got off the internet. And um, I just basically traced over it just to get like the, this proportions and all this. Um, and, and that's basically what this drawing is. Now, um, the defining characteristics of a rabbit, like what makes a rabbit like special than other animals? And some of those things are like long ears. It has really long ears, a fluffy tail. It's got big feet so it could hop around. It's a fluffy kind of an animal. So what you wanna do, instead of drawing like a literal representation of an animal, you wanna exaggerate um, those defining characteristics. So here is my version of that. Um, so here you can see I've made the ears like super big. Um, I've made his little like also the teeth on a rabbit are really characteristic of rabbits. So you, and you can't even really see those normally, but on a cartoon or on a character, you want to exaggerate that. So I made it so you could see his teeth. I also made his uh, like back legs like super duper long. And I made his tail like extra fluffy and also added some more fur detail. Like this one is obviously more furry. You, can, you can't really see, even see like the fur on, the, on his back, but adding that little bit of furriness makes it more like a furry and you like a furry animal. <laughs> and, um, and as you can see, the difference between these is, is pretty, um, it's pretty distinct. Like this, these ears, oops, these ears look actually super small, even though they're like proportionally like the right size for rabbit ears. So, um, taking those really defining characteristics and just exaggerating the heck out of them. I have one more example and this is a hippopotamus. So here's the hippo photo that I found. And here's just like, I tr basically traced over it. Um, but for a hippo, some of those defining characteristics of what makes a hippo a hippo is um, like the way that their face is shaped, like that nose kind of has that like bulbous, you know, end, <laughs> like the snout. Uh, they have those little ears and then they're overall just like big creatures. <laughs> Sorry for the beeping. Um, they ha they're just like big and like round and, you know, you could say fat, I guess, you know, but that, that's kind of what makes a hippo a hippo. And then there's kind of some wrinkles and things like that too. And so this version over here is my exaggerated version. So I've really like taken his snout and like made it really big and made that kind of like a, uh, a really defining feature. Uh, they also have those like teeth that when, if you see one with your, with its mouth open, you could see really distinct teeth. So I added the teeth and then little, I made the feet like really little and then the body just like, big and curvy. So as you can see, like this has a lot more character than something like this. Um, and then another thing that's kind of on the same lines of this is also simplifying certain features. So 
you know, this hippo has a lot of like wrinkles and things like that. And you can see them here, like skin folds. And so what I've done here is I've kind of made, I've alluded to that in the picture. So you can see I've got sign of some wrinkle lines, a little bit right there. And then even like the shapes of the legs, they're not like super angular. I simplified that too. So exaggerating things and simplifying things is kind of what you want to do uh, with your animal character. Okay, on to the second tip, uh, employ anthropomorphism. So anthropomorphism is giving human characteristics to non-human entities. So basically adding some human elements into an animal character. So you can see this is the one I showed you already, the rabbit. And then this is one that is a little bit more human. You know, it stands upright like a human. It kind of has arms like a human. And um, even the way the legs are, you know, you can see they're still like very rabbit-like because they're big, but it's more of, of like a human pose. And you can give your animal human characteristics through the way that its body is shaped, but also the way that it behaves, like how does it move? How does it interact with objects? Like does it, like if it's, um, if it's a horse, could you, you, you might not want to give it like human like fingers, like that would be weird. So how would it pick up objects, maybe with its teeth? Um, or maybe you do give it more human like characteristics. Maybe it stands on its hind legs and uses its little feet to like clamp onto things. That's totally up to you, like how you decide to bring like humanness into your animal character. And like how human do you want to make it? So here we've got something that's pretty much like a regular rabbit um, with a little more characterized features, a little bit more human. And this is basically like a human with a rabbit head. So the body is completely human-like, but it's got an animal head. And none of these are wrong. Like these are all ways that you could do it. It's up to you as the artist to decide like how human do you want to make your character. And then the final thing is to amplify expressiveness. So... Uh, generally animals have like little beady black eyes. Most of them, um, they're small. They don't always have eyebrows, <laughs> but things that make a face more expressive are the eyes, eyebrows, and the mouth. And so like amplifying those features is going to help you make your character more expressive. So for example, here's a little turtle that I drew with, um, just little beady eyes and small regular, like a mouth. And like, even that's kind of cartoony. But if I choose to make the eyes bigger and also like include the whites of the eyes and give the character eyebrows, like obviously turtles don't have eyebrows, but if I give this character eyebrows, it's going to allow me to manipulate all those features to give it the ability to be expressive. So think about how you can add to the character to make it more expressive. Um, so those are my three tips and I kind of now wanted to get into um, drawing an actual, ca actual character for you guys out of an animal. And of course, the first step that you want to do for any character is to define, basically to define it. And I have this character profile temple that, template that you can get for free on my website. I think Jeff will share a link. And basically, you want to define all the qualities about that character. Um, some of these are more like human centric, but you can kind of uh, adapt it for animals. Um, you can also try our random character generator, which is kind of what I use to create the uh, persona of the character I'm going to draw today. And I'll show you that real quick. You can find it on our website. Um, if you go to tutorials, so bardobrush.com, you can go to character camp and that'll give you all the info for character camp. Last week we did um, building a human character one piece at a time, which you can apply this same method to animals too. It doesn't have to just be humans. Um, and then I also added, here that's all for that last week. Then I also added info about animals and creatures and stuff and what we're working on this week. So let me, what I'm trying to show you here is not on this page, hold on. <laughs> If we go to the develop, I have also have an article called develop a character for illustration, which talks even more about like, what is a character? What makes a good character? You can get that pre free character profile there. And this is what I'm trying to find the random character generator. It's right here. 
Okay, so this basically um, creates a random profile. It's a very basic profile for either a human, an animal or creature, or an inanimate object. So all you have to do is tap on it and then it'll give you some kind of weird uh, character profile. So draw a cold hippo that loves telling jokes. They want to take a nap, but are afraid of yelling and screaming. <laughs> it's pretty random. Um, you can refresh the page or tap that little button that says, give me a new idea. Uh, draw an unlikely wizard that loves to travel. They want to help save the planet, but are afraid of fire. <laughs> Again, it's completely random. Um, I'll do one more. Draw a chunky dog that loves petting flamingos. They want to go on a meditation retreat, but are afraid of germs. So you get, you like, I don't know about you, but like you can already, like my mind starts to really start to picture something just like based on that little bit. So uh, the character that I came up with for what we're gonna draw today I actually found because of this character generator. And so basically I'm gonna be drawing a duck who loves summertime and is also a little clueless, like that part I added. But the duck who loves summertime is what gave me the inspiration for this character. So let's draw. All right, that was a lot of info. I don't know if we've had any questions before we get into the actual drawing bit. Are we doing okay, Jeff? So far we're doing really good. I mean, I love to see everyone out there has been downloading the um, character worksheets and doing so much work out there. I know, so. it's been so cool seeing you know everything that you guys have been doing. So yeah, You guys are all working really hard. All right, so I'm going into Procreate now and I'm gonna create a new canvas. I'm just gonna use I have a 4,000 by 4,000 pixel square canvas. I'm gonna work square today. Um, so that's what I'm gonna be doing. And I'm gonna start off by doing some sketches. So I visualized a duck uh, who loves summertime. So what, what to me that was, was um, and also was a little clueless. So I saw a duck standing and he had like a inner tube around his waist and also like big scuba flippers on his feet which I thought was like really hilarious because ducks can float, <laughs> like they naturally float and they also have like built-in flippers. So I thought it'd be funny if he had, like has those accessories and he's like ready to go swim um, just to, for like a comedy aspect. So that's what I'm gonna be picturing. So um, I'm gonna start off by getting a reference and I wanna find a reference of like a duck standing. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, so if you can pull up from the bottom, you'll get this little dock. And if I take Safari, come on, drag it over here, I have this like split screen view, I can resize it. And then I am going to look up photos of duck standing. Okay, we go to images, and then we've got some ducks kind of standing up. And I'm gonna pick one of these, I think this one will be, I like this guy. I have an affinity for white ducks because I used to have one when I was in high school. I had a pet duck named Indiana <laughs> and um, he was cute. I loved him. Okay, uh, fun fact about Lisa Day. I'm gonna flip it. Okay, so this is a good photo. It's, it's kind of in the pose that I imagine that my duck will be in or at least close to it. Um, so I'm gonna start with this. All right, and if you notice, I just kind of dragged it from there into here, and you can drag a photo from Safari into Procreate, that works. I'll get rid of that for now. I might bring it back later. Okay, so I'm just gonna start by tracing it um, and, very, and kind of defining the basic shapes of this animal. And I actually have a video about how to do this called Foundations of Style. It's about how to do this with bears, but you can, you can um, apply it to any animal or pretty much anything. You're basically finding those um, like basic shapes. So I'm gonna get kind of like a dark medium gray and I'm gonna grab my pencil box from, uh, my Bardo pencil from my pencil box set. You can also use any of the pencil brushes from the sketching set that's built into Procreate whatever pencil brush you want. Okay, so now I'm just kind of like breaking this down into basic shapes. So, oops, I'm gonna create a new layer. So I reduce the opacity of this picture and then I create a new layer on top. And I'm seeing like a big oval here and kind of like a triangular, like a curved triangular shape there, 
Of course, we've got the duck's like long neck, kind of curvy and long, and kind of goes around like that. So he's got like a little bit of a bulb kind of head. Very, it's not much wider than the neck itself, but it is a little bit. So that's something to take note of. And then of course we've got the bill, and I'm just going to trace over that to get a familiar to get myself familiar with what a duck bill is shaped like. It actually goes down a lot like that and then comes out a little bit like that. And then for the bottom part, it looks like it curves back in like that and then comes around and meets. And then he's got these big nostrils. You probably can't really see the one on the other side, but it's there. And then like little beady eyes. Okay. And then down here, um, where the legs connect, there's kind of some, like a curved shape there. And there's also some like fluffy butt feathers. <laughs> Um, fluffy butt feathers. Yeah. <laughs> fluffy butt feathers. That's a technical term, you guys. And then, of course, we've got the legs, the webbed feet. Okay. And then we'll draw the other one. There's also this toe that's right there, but I don't know if I'll include that in my final piece. I'm just kind of getting a feel of, like, what makes a duck a duck right now. And then kind of looks like they... There we go, because there's like the bones here and then like the flat part right there. So that's kind of how I'll just pick it. So there's a very basic like rendering of a duck, a big circle or oval. We've got like the curly tail, maybe some butt feathers <laughs> if I choose to include those, webbed feet and, you know, the bill and the little tiny eye. And so this is not a character yet. This is just like just a duck so far. So I'm going to actually just move it off to the side. And I'm going to move this over a little bit too. There we go. All right, so we can see both. Um, okay, so now I'm going to try and emphasize um, those defining characteristics, those defining features of the duck, the things that make the duck the duck. So, of course, um, for me, like what I think is the bill, like the duck bill is really like, that makes a duck a duck and different than any other bird. Um, the long neck and then the big webbed feet and then kind of the way that the tail goes up. So a lot of what I'm drawing already, but now I'm gonna like try and exaggerate it. So I'll start with the bill and we can just start by just making it really long like that. And this is just like a very rough sketch. You know, we can make that super duper long um, the head, the he they have little heads, so I don't really want to make the head big or I kind of like it being like a small ratio and compared to the, the duck bill. And then we've got a long neck. Um, and then for the eyes, um, I want to amplify that expressiveness. So I could do, I don't want to do like a little dot eye cause I can't really manipulate that too much. So maybe I'll try a bigger eye with a you know, pupil, so I can see the whites of the eye, maybe even add an eyebrow, and now I have something that I can work with so that I can um, manipulate that to be more expressive. Like I could draw it that, oops, let me see. I could draw it this way, and it would be like an angry duck, you know, because he's got the eyebrows, so I've got more to work with. Okay, let me go back. And then, of course, we need the little nose hole nostril okay and the body the round shape really works for me i'm just gonna keep going with that and then maybe hmm, maybe i'll add some like fluffiness to the butt <laughs> oh and you know one thing i totally forgot in this one was the wing that's super important too like you can't even in the photo you can't really see the wing too much but that's going to be important for me to um, make my animal more a character because I want to use the um, wings kind of like arms. Ducks don't have arms, they have wings. So I think the wing will become <clears throat> an arm and like the feathers can be fingers. So, right, Wait, that's... so, so why are we sketching two ducks right now? So, um, so this one is just like a basic almost tracing of the duck. And then this one I'm trying to... Um, 
exaggerate certain features and like figure out how I can make it be more like a character. And then for my final piece, I will use everything that I've learned through doing this and just draw my character duck. So, um, so I like these kind of bumpy parts for where the legs connect. I'm just gonna simplify the legs and make them more straight, but I think I'm gonna make the feet like bigger. Like that. So those big webbed feet are very characteristic of the duck. And then for the arms or arms slash wings, I'm gonna um, make them look kind of like that. So they're almost a little bit more hand-like than just like wing-like. I think that maybe would be more like, just like wings with feathers. These can be used as like fingers for how my duck could move and <clears throat> pick up things. Might even make the arms a little, or the wings a little longer. Okay, so I think that's all the components. And you can see, let me get rid of that. You can see the difference just between this and this. Like this has a little bit more personality and expressiveness. Um, I've really exaggerated the bill and the feet. And I've got something to work with as I move on to drawing my actual character. So I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Um, okay, so now I'm gonna work on the sketch that I had in my head about like the duck with the with the inner tube and the flippers. So I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm just gonna resize this. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna copy this one. So I'm gonna select it. Swipe down with three fingers, whoops, three fingers. Um, I'm gonna cut and paste, and that's gonna put just that selection onto a new layer. So I can turn off like my basic duck and I can move this one just off to the side, just so I can use it kind of as a reference. Okay, so now I'm starting from scratch. So I have the knowledge of like what my duck, what makes up my duck and I'm gonna draw a duck now. <laughs> okay, so let me resize that one a little bit more. So I'm gonna start with his body, and the body is a round shape, like I established. Um, okay, like a round ovaly shape. And then we've got like a curvy tail feathers coming up right there. Um, and then we've got the long neck. I don't know if I wanna run out of space. Let me see. And then the kind of like a little bulb kind of head, not a big head, surrounded like that. Uh, and then let me make a little, oops, I forgot. I wanted this to be on a separate layer. Hold on, let me just get this on a different layer. Always check what layer you're on. Cut and paste, now it's on a new layer. <laughs> and I can just resize it if I need to. Okay, uh, and then let me go ahead and do the inner tube because I want to define where that's going to go. So it's going to go around his body there and then kind of like that. And then you wouldn't see the bottom of his body, but this is just like the basic sketch. And then I want to have like the feet coming out the bottom. Kind of like that. So the hot topic right now, Lisa, is, is what do we name the duck? Oh, you guys tell me. I, mean, I didn't give it a name, so. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, a couple a couple people, of course, were going Donald. Steve is the, the Steve. winner currently, which <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, I'm thoroughly amused by. But, yeah, we'd love to see what you guys want to name, uh, yeah. name the duck. All right, I'm drawing where is the direction that his feet are going to go. But then I'm going to add, like, those swim fins, you know, like scuba divers wear. Uh, over the top of his feet, which I think is super silly because he's got built-in flippers. He doesn't need these. He just likes them. That's his character. <laughs> he's a little clueless. Um, so I'm gonna run out of space here, so I'm just gonna resize that a little bit more. So I'm gonna draw these really big flippers. Now they're like super big. Before he had big feet, but now he has even bigger feet because he's got swim fins on. Kinda wraps around the back of his leg. And I 
Okay, and then the flippers kind of have. And if you're not sure what things look like, like swim fins and things like that, always pull, I, I always recommend pulling up a reference photo and be like, hey, what do swim fins look like? And then you'll know, and then you can draw it how you want to. So there he is with his swim fins. Um, we also need his arms, his wings. So I'm gonna draw the wings kind of holding up the uh, inner tube. And then maybe we've got one coming, or it's maybe just like peeking down behind or something like that, like it's holding the other side up. Okay, and then his head and his big bill. So I'm remembering this shape that kind of goes like that, where his nose connect, or his bill connects to the face. And then that goes down quite a bit. And like a big bill. I kind of want the bill to be a little more, like you can see the top of it, the edge of it. This one's kind of, well, you can kind of see it there, but I want it to be a little wider at the end. I think that would be a little more fun. And then this line here can become his smile. So I can even extend it out a little bit, you know, to be more like a smile line. We've got the bottom, you know, like the bottom part. I could also draw it open like this, but I think I'm gonna keep it closed. All right, and then the nostrils. Okay, and then the eyes. Um, kind of like these eyes, let me try. You also can decide like where you wanna put the eyes. Like if the eyes are gonna be here and small, you know, something like that, or if you want them to be, oh, that might not be too high, closer in. Everywhere, any, all these decisions that you make are gonna change your character to be whatever you want it to be. It could also be close to his nose. Like, I think like Donald Duck kind of has eyes that kind of connect to the bill, right? I don't know, I'd have to pull up a picture. So it could be like that. Um, I kind of like that. So I'll, I'll, I'll kind of stick with that. So this is like a really basic sketch, very rough. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and like refine it. And I'm probably make his head a teeny bit bigger. A little eyebrows. Okay, so to refine the sketch, basically all I do is reduce the opacity of this layer, tap in, slide it on down, and then create a new layer right above that. And then I just draw it again, but make it a little more, less, a little less rough. So we'll start here, maybe, uh, Add some like texture to the tail feathers. Kind of go like that. Oops, let me do that one more time. Do the bill. I'm gonna play around with the eyes a little bit. I love that we've gone with Steve, but just to say, I mean, we had a couple good ones. Puddles came up. Um, uh, kind of like General Quack came up. <laughs> General Quack. I mean, we had, it's not. He's not a military man. He's like a like <laughs> fun loving, summertime loves to hang out, and have fun kind of a duck. I made his eyes smaller, and I think I like that better. I think that's pretty cute. Um, okay, let's get this inner tube looking a little better. Let me get the wings. Maybe I'll give him one more little feather on the end. So he's four. Okay, and then got the inner tube. Cool. And then I'm just gonna. This is that like seam, you know, on the inner tube, that middle part. 
and we're gonna do four little feathers for the arms. Okay, and then adding the feet, general quack. <laughs> <laughs> And it's good to get a nice, you know, established stitch or everything's just where you want it to be. Um, because when you go into add color, it's gonna make things a lot easier. You're not gonna have to like redraw things or readjust things. Mm. Let me see. What brush are you using right now? I'm using Bardo Pencil from my Pencil Box set. It's my favorite pencil. But there are ones built into Procreate too, so. Any sketching brush, you guys. Any sketching Whatever brush you like to use for sketching. Yeah. I'm not gonna tell you you have to use mine because you use what you like. I just like using pencil brushes. All right. I will make this a little wider. A little bit wider. There we go. Okay, last one here. And just in case for everyone who's not on YouTube, I mean, we, we've already got a backstory right now. <laughs> for Steve the Duck. Oh man, you need to be sharing. Then, Tell me about. He so apparently, he's definitely Steve now. <laughs> <laughs> Swimming Minecraft playing duck. <laughs> uh, nice. <laughs> so just in case you guys needed the backstory. That oh my gosh, he's funny. Sorry guys, you guys, that's what you're here for, man. I gotta be creative enough to come up with all the stuff to teach you. You guys gotta do the rest. <laughs> Um, and if you're doing like that character profile, this is, that's where you would get into like creating the backstory and what he likes and dislikes and all that stuff, which is very, very important to character. I'm doing more of a like basic kind of character, not really getting into too much into the story, obviously, but I love that you guys are, um, you know, you could even add additional things. So right now we've got two kind of accessories. We've got flippers and a swim fins. You could add sunglasses. You could add like a swimming cap, you know, whatever you want just to kind of further tell the story of this duck. I'm going to keep it like it is for now, just for simplicity's sake for the video. Um, but I think it would be super cute if he had glasses or some other stuff. Okay. So sketch is looking pretty good. Definitely looks like a duck. Um, so let's go ahead and move on. I'm going to turn off that little one there, turn off this one, kind of get this exactly where I want it to be, and then I can start coloring this in. So for that, I don't know what these other layers are for. I think I accidentally made too many. Okay, so I'm gonna reduce the opacity of this layer, and now that I'm ready to start coloring, I'm gonna turn the blend mode of this layer to multiply, and that just makes it so that I can see it better as I'm coloring underneath it. I'm gonna create a new layer right underneath it, and that's where I'm gonna do all my coloring. This is gonna be the topmost layer. Okay, so my deck is gonna be white. Um, so I think I'm just gonna go ahead and turn my background into a color because it will be hard to draw anything white. So let's do like a pink. I love, love a nice pink background. Okay, so there's pink, and I'm gonna start drawing the duck. So I'm gonna grab white, and um, I'm just gonna use some brushes from my gouache paint box. Been using that one a lot this month. Uh, I'm gonna start with opaque round. That's a nice smooth edged brush. So I'm gonna get the whole duck body to start. And I'm basically just like a coloring book, like, like outlining it and coloring it in using my line work as a guide. My line work will not be in the final version. And you know what? Since you guys named my duck Steve, male ducks have a curly cue on their tail. Bet you didn't know that. <laughs> I do, because I had a duck <laughs> that was a male. Um, okay, so I've got the whole duck body. I'm just going to fill that in with color drop 
There we go. And then I'm gonna do his wings. So I'm just gonna turn off that other layer so it doesn't interfere as I'm trying to draw this one. Okay, fill that in. And then the other wing is gonna be behind the duck. So I'm gonna put that on a layer behind the duck body. And it's okay if I draw the whole wing, I'm gonna draw the uh, inner tube over the top of it, so. Let's do that again. I wanna get those curvy shapes. There we go. And it's okay that it doesn't, it doesn't really matter what that shape looks like, it's gonna be covered up in the end. So you can color drop or you color it in like this, either way. Okay. All right, so we've got the wings, got the body. Um, we've got, we'll do the inner tube. So the inner tube's gonna go above this wing layer, but also above the body layer. So I'm gonna create a layer beneath that wing, but above the body. And let's do like a nice blue for the inner tube. Maybe a little bit darker. So because it's on a layer below the wing, it's just going to be right behind the wing. So that's exactly what I want. And then here, I'll clean it up in a little bit, but. In my mind, he's like holding up the inner tube with the wings. That's what's going on here. So I'm trying to depict that. Okay, I've got a closed shape. Oops, I've got a closed shape, so we can fill that in. And then I'm just going to grab, if you hold down the eraser, so if you tap and hold the eraser, it'll, you, it'll select the same brush that you have selected here. So now I have opaque round as my eraser as well, and I can kind of clean up this little spot. There we go. And then also over here, where it goes behind the body. Okay. All right, so we've got the inner tube drawn. I'm going to... Clean that up. And now I'm gonna move on to the legs. So I like to do, when I do my drawings, I like to do all the flat colors. I do all the flat shapes and then I add texture and details and things like that. So that's what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna create a layer below everything else. Um, actually on this same layer that the body is, I'm gonna draw his little like leg nubs. <laughs> that's what I'm calling them, where the legs connect to the body. And now on that layer behind everything else, I'll draw the actual legs. Let's see what's a good color that's gonna contrast well with my pink. There we do, like a yellowy orange. So nice straight legs. And then his feet actually, I wonder if you can see them. No, maybe not. All right, I only need a little bit of his legs because they go into the swim fins. Steve, you silly duck. <laughs> He'll be a really fast swimmer though, right? Cause he's got these big old swim fins. <laughs> okay. A layer above the feet so that I can add in the fins. And I think I'll do green for the fins. Let me see. Maybe a little darker than that. What brush are we doing all of our color blocking with right now? Uh, I've been using opaque round for my color blocking. So now I'm gonna draw the fins. Fill that in. And then we've got the bit that goes around the back of his leg. And I'll erase right there. I could put it on another layer and make it go behind it, but Sometimes easier just to clean it up like that. There we go. There. Okay, so we've got the thing that wraps around the back as well. And then we'll draw this one. I 
want to hear more about Steve's adventures, guys. I really <laughs> was enjoying that. Well, you guys are doing that. So Steve is a lifeguard. Oh. Um, so I mean, you don't know, but we're gonna we're gonna ask you in a little bit as we're doing details <laughs> to put a little lifeguard cross on his inner tube. Oh my goodness. Um, so Steve, Steve, the um, swimming Minecraft playing duck is also a lifeguard. I feel like he would be like a wannabe lifeguard because he's like kind of clueless. <laughs> He thinks he's going to save people, but he probably shouldn't because obviously he's not the brightest tool in the tool shed. No, that's the brightest bulb in the... I don't know. You know what I mean. Sharpest, <laughs> Sharpest tool in the tool shed. <laughs> um, okay, so we've got the flippers. I'm going to do his bill. So that's going to be on a layer. I'll just do it on top of everything else. I'm going to switch to a different brush since we're getting into like smaller details. Uh, I'm going to use detail liner. That's my liner in this set that's got smooth edges, very similar to the opaque round. So it'll play nicely with the brush I've already been using. Oops, let me try that again. Oops. Okay. Okay, just gonna fill that all in. Perfect. And it always helps to turn off the sketch so you can like actually see what everything is looking like. Sometimes the sketch will skew what you're drawing if you can't see the actual shapes. There. Okay, all right, we've got a bill. We need some eyes. Uh, now he's on white so i usually draw like a white circle with a black dot for eyes so that's not going to work here because it's white duck um so i'm going to maybe do like a gray outline and i just created a new layer i'm still using my detail liner probably make it a little smaller though and i'll just draw a gray circle okay and then right below that layer just I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the pupils on a different layer just in case I need to go back and adjust the eye shape. So, there we go. Cool, that's looking good. Okay, and then I'll just put the, I'll put the eyebrows on the same layer too. I could do the eyebrows in black. Maybe I'll do them in like a dark gray instead. The black is like really intense, so. Oh, that works. I think it would be fun also to give him a couple feathers on the top of his head, like a little bit of texture. So I'm going to the layer that has the, uh, there, something like that, the body. This is the head and body layer. That's kind of cute. Okay, so I've got all my um, basic shapes established. I'll look at it with the sketch turned off. And now I can go in and add um, a little bit of shading. So if you, somebody asked about using line work and if you were gonna do a piece with line work, it might look something like this. We've got lines to define where the arm is and you know, all those kind of things in here. But if you don't have line work, you have to use shading to create that contrast. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, I'll start with the body. So what I like to do, since I've got the shapes how I want them, um, I don't need to change the shapes really anymore. So I'm gonna turn on alpha lock. So anything I add to that shape will only be within the confines of the shape I've already drawn. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get like a creamy gray, a little creamy dark gray. And, hmm, I've been using light brush strokes to do shading. Let me try gouache grain though. Okay, yeah, I think I'll do that. I'm gonna use for my shading, I'm gonna use soft gouache grain. And it just has a little bit more texture like to the shading, you can see right there. And it's just like, I like it. So I'm just gonna draw a shadow here. If I draw lightly, it won't be as dense, but if I draw dark, you know. Um, and then I'm gonna get like a little bit darker. Okay, so now you can see like where the wing is because I have added that shadow, so that's what I mean. 
And I'm gonna need to do something similar to the neck. So what I can do here, and then just kind of erase, oops. I, I can't erase, I have to use white and draw it back over. So this is where sometimes having things on different layers is helpful. Like if I had the neck on a different layer than the body, I wouldn't need to do what I'm doing now. So, okay, let me get a really light color and just add some shading on the whole bottom part. Make it bigger. Maybe, I don't know, we could try adding some shading to the back of the neck too. I'm just kind of going off the cuff here, you guys. <laughs> um, for the wings, uh, it would be light here, but maybe a little darker down here. So I'm going to turn on alpha lock on that layer and just add a little bit of shading there. And then of course this one in the back would be pretty well shaded because it's behind something else. So I'm gonna go a little bit darker. There. Okay, so that's good to start with. I'm gonna do some on the um, inner tube. And for that one, I am gonna go use my light brush strokes because this is gonna have a lot more smoother shadows. These kind of have some texture, which is great for an animal, but not so good for like a smooth inner tube. So I'm gonna choose this blue. I'm gonna use this brush at a reduced opacity. That way I can build up my shading. And I'm gonna go ahead and start with the darker color. So darker and more saturated version of this color. And I'm going to the inner tube, turning on alpha lock. And so the highlights would be here on top and it would be kind of shadowed along the edges and of course on the very bottom. So let me just start by, oops, did I not turn on alpha lock? Alpha lock, there we go. Swipe to the right with two fingers to turn on alpha lock. You can also tap it and tap alpha lock in the menu. All right, let's see. There we go, that's better. Uh, a little bit less opacity. There we go, cool. And down here, I'll go a little bit darker, smaller. That's like the underside. There we go. And then I'm gonna add like a lighter color on top. So I'm gonna select this color and then just go lighter. And what size we have. I think we need even lighter, maybe more opacity to the brush. Oh, maybe a little too much. There you go. And what brush did you just change over? Uh, this is light brush strokes. I'm kind of making the strokes follow the curve of the inner tube. Okay. So now we're starting to add some dimension to that inner tube. Um, that's good for now. I will come back and add some like line details, but I think that's all right for this for the moment. Um, okay, where it's, let's go do the face. Um, so I'm gonna work on the bill and let me see. I might just add a little bit of shading to like the edge and the underside. So I'm gonna select this color. I'm gonna choose a redder. So for, so for yellows and oranges, when I go with a darker value for like shadows and stuff, I don't just go to like a darker version because I think it looks really muddy. I actually like to go darker and more saturated, which in this case would be going closer to red. So a little darker, a little more saturated. And I think that has like a nicer color, it's not so like muddy, so. Is there a reason why alpha lock wouldn't be working for me when we're like switching around and everything? Um, if there's nothing on the layer, make sure you're, you have that layer selected. Like if I was on this layer, this had alpha lock turn, but I was drawing on this layer, then obviously that wouldn't work. We have to be selected on that same layer. Possibly that could be what's going on. Okay, so I'm just gonna add some dimension to the underside of the bill maybe along this edge. There we go. That kind of helps it be more of like a 3D. And then maybe I'll add some highlights to the top. So I'm selecting that same layer and I'm going just a lighter. 
And also, again, with yellows and oranges, you could go for lighter, you could go closer to like a green, just a little bit. Okay, so now we've got some dimension happening there. I think that's pretty good. I don't wanna add a ton. I'm gonna be adding some line work to like define where the mouth is and stuff, so that's fine for now. Uh, let's work on the leg since we're kind of in the same color range. I'm gonna go to the leg layer, turn on alpha lock, and get like a darker color, and just have, maybe not quite so dark. Just little shadows under here. And what did you switch to? I, I just switched, I'm on the same brush, so light brush strokes, but I'm just on the feet layer now. So I'm just adding a little bit. Knowing where to show, put the shadows also, um, when you, you wanna define like where your light source is coming from, which I haven't really done. I just kinda like when I don't have a defined light source, I kinda just imagine the lights coming like from down or maybe just off to the side a little bit. Um, but really it's just to kinda get to definition between like things that are the same value. Uh, let's see, maybe we'll do the edges of the feet like that. All right, just a little bit. And this, hmm, I'm going to create a clipping mask for this. So I'm gonna select this layer with the flippers, create a new layer right above it, tap it, and create a clipping mask. And the difference between clipping mask and alpha, alpha lock is like the, whatever's on the clipping mask you can, so if you like drew that and you needed to clean it up, it's on a separate layer, so you can easily do that. Like if, if I used alpha lock to do that, and I know these colors aren't right, oops. Then I couldn't just like erase away part of it because I'm erasing what's on that layer. So I hope that makes sense. I do have a, a tutorial about alpha lock and clipping masks and maybe Jeff can share that link. Okay, so I'm selecting that green. I'm gonna use a darker, cooler green. That's what I do with my greens. When I go darker, I usually make them a little cooler. And I'm actually gonna choose a different brush. Let's go with my detail liner. Cause right now I'm just adding um, like this, this little part here. Okay. And I'll fill it in maybe. Let me see what that looks like. Yeah. There we go. That's what I wanted to do. It's not really shading. It's just kind of adding that extra little bit. <laughs> Okay. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And now I'm gonna go back to this layer, which has alpha lock on it, and just add a little bit of shading to it. So you can use clipping mask and alpha lock like at the same time. I want it to be especially dark right where it goes behind his foot, like right there. Yeah, I'm not going too crazy with any shading. I might, yeah, we'll just leave it like that for now. Um, I wanna add some highlights to the uh, this thing. So I think I'm just gonna go over to adding some line work. Um, so I'm gonna create a layer above everything else. So when I add my line details, I usually put them all in the same layer on top of everything else. So that's what I'll do here. I'm gonna start with the, like kind of that like seam that's around the inner tube. So I'm gonna choose a darker blue. And I'm gonna use, I'll use fine grain liner for my details. It's kind of just like a different texture for a different look. So, you know, it has that like, seam that kind of goes around it and then it's you know like uh kind of wavy i don't like that <laughs> and then i'm gonna add like some really bright highlights um with a the alabaster liner this is another liner brush that's kind of uh, a little bit transparent, so I think it will do nicely to add just some like shiny highlights to the inner tube. 
and you can build them up and stuff. And I could even get some, if I get a really solid brush, I can make those highlights even more shiny. Like the, the more contrast there is and the sharper the shape of the highlights are, the more shinier the object that you're trying to draw will be. I don't know what I want to do. I'm just playing around. Well, that works for now. Um, okay, what else do we want to do? It's not too much more. Um, I might even add some, you can also add, let me get like a gray. Like you, oops, that's not the brush I want. I'm gonna use fine grain liner again. And a little bit darker. You could add a little bit of a line here to kind of give it even more definition like that. Just kind of depends on how you want to do your art. Also right there between these two colors like that. Uh, one thing I know I need to do is add some blue here. Like, cause you wouldn't see this sky. You would see like the other side of the inner tube. So I'm just going to add a layer right between the body and the inner tube and get like a darker blue. Oops. And then fill that in. I'm just using the same brush. So. There we go. There we go. That looks a little bit better. I think this, these just need a little bit of texture and I need to do line work on the face and then I think I'm good. So um, I'm going to select this green. I'm just going to add some brush stroke texture and this is just like a visual thing. I'm not really doing it to add shading or anything like that. on here oh, I'm not on the right brush um, I'm gonna use the light brush strokes but I'm gonna have the opacity all the way up and that just adds some kind of brush strokey texture I just think it needed a little something it's looking a little flat there we go okay finally let's add the last little bits of line work he needs his nostrils and his like bill so for the nostrils, I'm gonna go with like a dark, dark orange. I'm gonna use, uh, we'll use detail liner for these cause it's nice and smooth. There we go. I'm gonna use a lighter color for this. Actually maybe a little bit darker than that. It's always good to play around and see if whatever color you're choosing has enough contrast. Do I want to? And you can, like I said, you can turn this into like his smile, add some little smile lines like that if he's happy. It's a possibility. <laughs> um, I'm going to add a little bit of a highlight right on the end of his nose. <laughs> That's cute. And then some little details on this too. Maybe I'll choose the same green. Uh, let's do a different brush. I want something with texture. I'll use a fine grain liner. Just for fun. There we go. Cool. I think that's just about all that I need. Cool. So there's my little duck character. <laughs> I think he's kind of fun. Steve, the Minecraft playing... Wannabe lifeguard who, what else was there? <laughs> Minecraft playing life, swimming, Minecraft playing lifeguard. Mm. I realized something I forgot, which is I need to have a little bit of shadow right there. So I'm going back to that layer, getting my darker. So well, we still need to add the little, well, I mean, what did I forget you well, guys? I that you forgot. They wanted the lifeguard symbol. Oh, on YouTube. <laughs> okay. So. There we go. That looks like he's trying to hold on to it. So that works for that. Lifeguard symbol. Was that like a plus, like a little cross? A red, red cross, yeah. Okay. Um, I have an idea that he just like drew it on in like a Sharpie. <laughs> um, know, let's see. I have a marker brush. Let me go to my markers. I'll use the flat markers. 
Sorry, we're going, we're having fun now. So. We are having fun. I mean, you don't know the conversation that's going on about grapes right now and what the duck needs. Uh, I am down to get onto a duck anatomy lesson, but I don't think we need to talk about the corkscrew that exists with ducks. Wait, what? Uh, duck mating. Uh, everyone wants grapes. I'm not oh. sure if they want green grapes, purple grapes. Uh, I don't know where we're at with grapes, but people want the grapes. It's. Uh, I guess I think it's more texture. I don't know what the grapes are for either, honestly. I'm drawing like a badly drawn little cross and the brush is too big. That one should do it. Oh yeah, okay. I kind of want, you know, this is, this is very crudely done, but <laughs> like he just kind of wrote it on there really badly. <laughs> Oh, that's cute. <laughs> uh, I mean, and he spelled it wrong. <laughs> oh, that's funny. There we go. Yeah, and like all these little details will help give your character more character. I might, I might render that so it like looks a little less like you just drew it over the top of it. But yeah, all these little fun things you could add to give your character more character. I think it would be really cute to have one of those swimming caps with all the little flowers on top of it. Um, so, yeah. Do we have any questions <laughs> about all, any of this? So, so, for those who don't know, the duck having grapes is from the duck song, I guess. We're all oh. going to have to clearly look this up later. This must be, um, is this a YouTube thing? Is. This is, I'm not sure. Is it YouTube, you guys, or is this just a kid song? I don't know. You guys have to tell me. But I can take a few questions. <laughs> uh, so we had a, a couple earlier uh, one question that I want to make sure that we came back to um, with your use of shapes and shading rather than lines do you keep your characters brighter than the backgrounds how do you avoid the background from competing with your subject great question that's I mean in the same way that you can define this wing from blending into the body you can do the same to keep your character from blending in the background and that's contrast contrast is such a huge thing um when it comes to drawing like all these colors that i've chosen i chose specifically because have how they look against my backdrop um the only one that's like this this yellow is it works but it's a little like it's a little close to the pink in value so it kind of doesn't stand out quite as much as something like the inner tube like the eye goes straight to that inner tube and like the white of the body um so having contrast and ways that you can create contrast is with obviously a color that really is different than the background but also adding in a shadow or if he was standing in front of a cloud that was white. I don't know, I'm just making this up. Maybe a part of a tree comes between him and the cloud so that he stands up out against the background. So, you know, just something so that you can have contrast to make things stand out. Line work is a way to do that, but it's not the only way. Uh, we did have a one, someone was asking, uh, when is Steve's book coming out so I can buy it for my kids? <laughs> we'll see, guys. I I have never uh, illustrated a kid's book, but it's one of my goals. I'm actually working on one with a friend of mine that we've been writing it for like a year now. The COVID hit and we haven't really gotten to work on it. Um, but stay tuned for details about that because I am actually working on a book. Um but yeah, I've always wanted to do children's books. They're like my favorite. I love them. Um, a couple of people were asking, when are you going to do a video of like some of your best work? Oh, well, that's what I'm doing today, you guys. <laughs> 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 no, I, I don't know quite what you mean by that, but I try to put my best work out every day. So, uh. <laughs> yeah. Tom, uh, Tom over on YouTube was asking, uh, do you have a video about magic paper? We've got two really I do. good videos. Yeah, yeah I've got the tutorial. I've got a, a tutorial about it. And then um, I've done at least one stay at home and draw video with it. You can find it at com slash live for that video. But there's one on the product page too. All right. Any more care questions about animal characters or this drawing in particular? Yeah, someone actually was asking earlier about um, how do I handle four feet versus just two? Um, and then I suggested, of course, checking out the, uh, the foundations mm -hmm. of style video, which is phenomenal for yeah. doing just that. Yeah, it's the same method, believe it or not. Um, 
Let me find the video really quick. Jeff, I'm sure he threw up a link. I'm sure he threw up a link, but I think it is really good to reference this video in this video for you guys. Um, there it is. It's this one. And it's basically all about taking, like, observing what a bear or any animal looks like, breaking it down into basic shapes that you can manipulate to be in whatever pose you want it to be. That's what we did today. This goes into it in a lot more detail than I did today. So I would highly recommend checking out this video. But yeah, you can definitely do it with four legs. It's just about finding those basic shapes and manipulating them. Cool. All right. Um, let me go back here. So uh, I would love to see whatever it is that you guys are working on, especially if you're drawing something from this video or as a part of the character camp series. Uh, the first week we did human characters and this week we're doing animals and creatures, which, you know, is like not, not quite human, not quite animals. So things like mermaids and monsters and, you know, things like that. Um, that's all a part of that too. So there's some prompts for you to follow for the week, or you can work on developing the one character throughout the whole week, um, but yes, do tag me. I would love to see what you're working on. Uh, hashtag Bardo Brush or at Bardo Brush. My personal account is at Lisa Bardo. I love seeing what you guys make. That's what makes it really fun for me and keeps me motivated to keep making you guys stuff. So do that. Again, this is a part of the Making Art Everyday Challenge. Um, daily drawing prompts, resources, and community to help you establish a daily art making practice. The best way to become better at drawing is to draw as often as possible and to try lots of different things, like not just the same thing, but try drawing lots of different things. And that's what making art every day does. We've done themes for food and plants and animals and environments and We've done a lot of different stuff and it started at the beginning of 2019. So there's a lot of content there for that if you want to go back, but it's fun to join in where we're at today. So check that out here. And then of course, um, I own Bardo Brush. I make awesome brushes for Procreate as well as all this fun educational content for you guys to learn how to draw. So you could check that out. And then next week, we are going to be learning how to draw inanimate objects as characters. Um, which inanimate ob objects are just things that don't move on their own. Um, like they don't have life. <laughs> so we're going to learn how to give them life and kind of think about the world that they live in and things like that. So I'm really excited about that because I have, I really love, I don't know, I, I love when inanimate objects become a, like come to life. So, um, so I hope you'll join us next time for that video. That'll be next week on Wednesday at the same time. Um, but keep drawing your animals for the rest of this week. I hope you have a good rest of your week. Bye-bye.